Hello Grade 7s, I'm Helen and that means I'm bringing you your next Natural Sciences lesson and today we're looking at energy transfers. We've been doing a lot of work on the different kinds of energy or different types of energy. We've looked at potential energy and that is our stored energy in a system and kinetic energy, which is our movement energy. So at this point in time, you should be able to identify situations where there is a display of potential energy. And when something is moving, we are seeing kinetic energy at play. We need to understand, and we've started working on this relationship between potential energy and kinetic energy. And if we see this super action shot here, the greater the potential energy, let's use a little shorthand here, high potential energy, we're going to see that it's going to result in greater kinetic energy. Whoops, let's fix that, kinetic energy. So we see that there certainly is a relationship between how much potential energy we put into this system as to how much kinetic energy we can see delivered in the system or the output of the system. I want you to start thinking of input energy, which is going to be our potential energy. We've got some transfer of energy taking place and we have an output which is the kinetic energy. All right, start thinking in terms of input, transfer, output. We're going to be returning to this idea a lot over the next few lessons. So what happened to the potential energy as the ball began to move? So the potential energy was delivered by the foot and the ball started moving. And of course, when it was moving, it had kinetic energy. Where did it get its kinetic energy from? Was it magic or did it have kinetic energy from something delivering energy to it? And it got its kinetic energy from the potential energy that was in the foot, All right? And that energy of the foot, the potential energy, is going to be transferred to the ball. And the ball will then display this kind of energy as it moves up into the air. Right? Learn to be able to look at a system, see where the input is, what the transfer is, and what is the output. And you're going to see that the input is going to be potential energy, there's going to be a transfer, and we're going to see some kind of kinetic output. We know that the energy from the foot is transferred to the ball. So we can see and we can make a general statement, and here's a general statement, not foot and ball, but energy can be transferred from one object to another object, from the foot to the ball in this particular example here. But energy can also be transferred within an object. Where did the foot get the energy from in order to kick the ball? Well, our dynamic soccer player here ate a very healthy diet. That chemical energy in the food through processes of digestion and metabolism inside his cells was transferred within the object of the soccer player to his foot, from the food to the foot. So we're starting to see that we can make a whole chain of energy transfers in a particular system.
So the chemical potential energy of the soccer player's food was transferred, there's our first transfer, into kinetic energy in the muscles. And that is an example of energy transfer within the object. But then the foot of the soccer player, here's our second transfer, transferred energy to the ball. And in this way, potential energy was transferred in a mechanical way from the foot to the ball by the action of the force. And where did the force come from? The force came from the first object, which was the foot. Whoa, are you following me? All right, we've got object number one being and the energy is transferred to object number two. That energy is transferred to object number three. If that ball then went and hit somebody on the head, well, that energy would be transferred to object number four. So we can see that when we look at any system or any context or any situation, we can follow the energy transfers and we can say, well, there's a whole set of energy transfers happening within one part of the system or within one object. But then there is also a series of transfers between objects as well. So what do I want you to take from this slide and this example? Energy can be transferred from object to object and also energy can be transferred within an object. Now that we've learned that, can we recognize it in other situations? So what I want you to do is to look at these two situations and to try and describe the energy transfers that are happening in these situations. So let's start with this one. In this one, we have a pool player and he is about to hit his cue, or to push his cue against the white ball. And the white ball will roll towards the red ball and hopefully the red ball will roll across the pool table and into the little hole in the corner of the pool table and then it will drop down into a little pocket. We've got a lot of movement going on, but that movement is not possible without energy. So let's go right to the very beginning. What is the source of our energy? Well, the pool player had to eat food. And that food is going to be our start of our energy transport system. The, or energy transfer system, should I say. The food is going to be broken down within the man. So within that little system, we're going to get an energy, energy transfer within the man and the food, that chemical potential energy is going to be transferred into the kinetic energy as his arm moves. So it's going to be transferred into kinetic energy and it'll be the energy of his arm, the muscles in his arm moving. The muscles in his arm will cause the pull cue to move forward. So we can take our energy transfer from the arm to the cue. So here we haven't got transfer within an, an object or part of the system. We've got from one object to another object, from the arm to the cue. The cue is then going to hit the white ball. So we're going to see the cue, the pool cue or the pool stick is going to hit the white ball. What is it going to do? It's going to transfer the energy to the white ball. We've got another transfer from object to a different object. We're then going to see the white ball strike against the red ball. And we're going to see another transfer of energy from object to object. 
we're going to see that red ball move across to the pocket. And as the red ball is moving, we're going to see that as kinetic energy, movement energy. And the red ball is going to fall into the pocket and it's going to come to rest at the bottom of the pocket. And once that red ball has made as much use of it can, as it can of that kinetic energy, it comes to rest. And in order to move that ball from the pocket, we would have to apply more potential energy. But have a look, it, it looks a mess what I've written here, but I think you've got the idea that we've got a whole lot of energy transfers that have gone on, first of all, within an object, the man, and then from object to object to object to object, as we see the set of actions take place. And while the actions are taking place, we are seeing the energy in its form of kinetic energy. All right, now let's see if you can have a look at this picture of our two children playing table tennis. Let's try and identify all the energy transfers. So let's start with the fact, and we'll, we'll start with the bat is going to swing forward and it's going to hit the ball. Bang. The ball is going to move across the table, it's going to bounce, and it's going to be hit from this bat, and we can continue this back and forward and back and forward until one of the player hits players hits the winning shot. Can we talk about where there is energy? transfers that are happening in or within an object. Well, it's going to be a very similar case as our pool player. Each of these children had to eat food. That food was their source of chemical potential energy. Their cells in their body process that chemical potential energy. And as soon as he moves his arm, to move the bat, the arm transferred that potential energy to the bat and it moved. The bat transferred the energy to the ball and therefore the ball moved. The ball then bounced up and the same kind of energy transfers that were happening in the boy are happening in the girl. And she has the potential energy to hit the ball back again. Now, I want you to notice something in this diagram. I'm going to rub out all my little drawings here just so that you can focus on what's in the actual diagram again. Can you see something that's present in the diagram of the table tennis players that was not present in the pool player diagram? Well, we can see that this is clearly a very heavy, tiring, strenuous game of table tennis because both of our players are sweating. Now, what happens when you sweat? When you sweat, you are releasing heat energy into the system. We mustn't forget that sometimes, even though we don't see it, when the two balls hit each other, there's a certain amount of heat energy that gets dissipated or spread into the, the environment around our little system. So what have we learned about energy transfers? They happen between stores within an object or between objects in a system. And sometimes some of that energy can be lost from the system in the form of heat energy. So if we were to describe the energy transfers as they relate to this situation, can you do that? We'll see the pendulum swinging up. As it moves, it has kinetic energy. It gets to the top of its swing, it has potential energy. It swings back down, it has kinetic energy. It gets to the top of its swing, it has potential energy. It swings back down and we can see that this is going to be an ongoing transfer of 
potential energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, kinetic energy. But we mustn't forget that sometimes in a system, energy is also lost to the environment as heat energy. And we call that wasted energy because it's not helping the balls to move or the table tennis players or the, the pool player at all. Wow, we've learned a lot today. I hope you can think about these energy transfers in different systems, but that's it for today. Goodbye. Thank you.